mute myself. Hello and welcome to On Air with Odin, Game Mastering Pathfinder Dragonfall. Today, it's going to be a bit of a short one because we're just going to get our recap done and perhaps decide on where we're going to go next. Last week, we basically reaped our rewards from the Goblin King and got all the gear back to uh, those two adventurers we had found. Although, Aranam was able to keep the robe that they had, which would actually help him cast more spells without having to worry too much about components. Um, we found um, the female of the two's sister, who was chained up to a wall and had clearly been whipped and beaten severely, as well as two others who were deceased from what seemed to be the same treatment. So we leave, uh, I can't forget what name I gave her, but we, we leave uh, the sister to take care of her sister and head our way back to Eastbrook to sh tell them that we got rid of the Goblin King pretty much. And upon reaching the Shire that we walked through before, that was completely destroyed, we find it being cleared up and we are invited to make camp here while the others just keep the area secure. And we took that offer. Sorry, that timing was horrid. Oh, we also found a uh, an intelligent heavy pick that's currently just sitting in Aranam's pack and kind of peeking its mm -hmm. head out of the top of the bag. One that slapped me right across the ass? No, I remember hitting people over the head. I don't remember hitting anyone in the ass. It, it hit me because I was going to shut the thing on it. Uh, yeah, that was in the head. Yeah, that was in uh, the head. Okay. I, I don't know. There was a joke a while back about the paladin getting hit in the ass. That's what I went with. Hmm. <laughs> No, I think it was a joke ages and ages ago about, you know, some drunken idiot would have to be pretty ballsy to slap the pallet in the ass. Yeah. I think that was a joke where we started this game. Uh, was it was a few part. sessions in. It wasn't, like, right at the start. We were on the surface, at least, at that point. Oh, shut up, phone, don't you start. Okay. Morning comes, and people still to seem to be uh, hard at work trying to get the Shire cleaned up and looking for bodies to bury, and perhaps even more survivors, though. From the, well, rather new looking burial site outside just outside the borders of the Shire. It seems they haven't found anyone yet. Okay. Being the morning, there is uh, there is a massive cauldron of stew being made for 
pretty much everyone. So you don't have to worry about breakfast this morning. Hooray. Yay! Breakfast. Okay. Mm. Somewhat. <sighs> you notice that there also seems to be um, a couple of scribes who seem to be constantly writing and people are coming back and forth to them forming of things and then heading off again and more and more pages are adding to this growing pile I'm gonna wander over and look at him the scribes seem to be very concentrated on their work don't, uh, without any reason to, they don't look up to greet you in any way. What are they writing? What well, seems to be um, a name on each paper and uh, what items were precious to them and what great deeds they did during their life. Uh. Well, I won't bother them. I just realized that my character sheet is on a flash drive in the other room. I will be right back. Okay. okay. I should probably get my character sheet up, shouldn't I? <laughs> yes, that would, be, that would be helpful. Chuck, how are you doing? Alright, you know, morning. Do the morning ritual. Mm. So, what was that you just said, Ben? I said, hello, truck, how are you doing? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. As the diesel engine goes past my room. I thought you said Chuck. I was like, wait, who's Chuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not Chuck. Oh, Chucky, Chucky, Chucky. Oh. Fucking King's Quest. <laughs> oh, wait. Was Chuck King's Quest or Discworld? Discworld. Yeah, I was like. Didn't sit right with me. I was like, wait, I'm wrong. What was that for? And then, of course, there was Chuckles in fucking <coughs> Ultima. Fucking Jester. <sighs> Alright, the, uh, okay. the current mood around the My Shire is very... Still pretty fine. somber, but very work-focused, and... Some people that are taking a break, seem to be having drinks, food, and the general consensus of the conversations is about the former residents of the Shire, and basically trying to recall the good times. And there seems to be a number of uh, halflings here as well. Yeah, really. That seems to happen a lot with them. With the sun peeking upwards further from the horizon and casting long shadows from the trees, the morning proceeds. Everyone who needs to do their morning ritual has done so, whether that be making bombs or uh, not the bombs themselves, the 
um, infusions, giving prayer and meditating. Or studying his mm -hmm. books in terms of Aaron out case. Oh. Genevieve is mm -hmm. feeling really fancy right now. Just saying. Trying to figure out what we're going to do next exactly. Mm. Yeah. <coughs> the person who seems to be cooking up the big cauldron of stew is, is also a halfling, and therefore the stew that is given to you is full of big meat chunks, potatoes, and ever other hearty stuff with a good helping of pepper. <laughs> Lovely. Not overly much, but you know, it's in there. Yeah, Tom will ha have a small bowl. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, good food, all that. Yeah, food sounds good. What? We had. Yeah. Let's see, we had a couple destinations left, right? One was uh, the town where the witch hunt was going on? Um, yes. That it? Like, you, your current destination was to go back to Eastbrook to inform the Goblin King, but there was also uh, Wintervale where the witch hunt was going on. Yeah, right. and then there's there the area... There is the the cave uh, to the far northeast. That that's where uh, Wilfred, I believe. No, Wilfred. God damn it! Yeah, Wilfred, because everyone made the Grimly joke. Uh, yeah, so Wilfred was meant to be over here in this area, and some say there has been motion up here to a cave that. Uh, Seems to have been recently opened. All right, so were we just going back to Eastbrook to inform them? Um, pretty much. I think that's what you you said at the end of the last session was to go. Then the other goblin came was taken care of, and the goblins didn't have a leader now. <coughs> mm that the attack should stop if they haven't already. Alright. But that's a few days travel back to Eastbrook. Yeah, I guess we'll just head back to uh, Eastbrook and form them what's going on and then come back unless we want to uh, ask one of the halflings or figure out something else for sending message back. Yeah, I'm okay with going back. It's completely up to you guys. I'm just setting up the seed and waiting for somebody to play it. <laughs> Wait, you mean we're supposed to be doing stuff? You're meant to be role-playing your characters, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, if, if you want to just keep it simple today, because, I don't know, everyone seems to be in a bit of a blare, so... <laughs> we've had breakfast, we might as well just head out to Eastbrook and get that taken care of and get our wagon. Yeah, I'm pretty good with that. 
Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Alright, that, that one halfling that you found here, uh, when you seem to be making your way out, he he cuts you off and goes, Oh, I almost forgot to mention, once we figured out all those who have passed away here and completed the cleanup, it's a uh, halfling tradition to throw a big feast and party in honor of the lives that have since then passed once we bury them with their most precious belongings. Uh, so if you have them back this way, uh, maybe in the next few days, or depending on how many, many more we need to find, then, you know, you'll be more than welcome. As you may have noticed, some of the halflings from the other Shire have made their way over here. Alright, thank you for the offer. We'll keep it in mind. Alright, well, safe travels to you. I thought the only right to give you an invitation after what you did. And then he wanders off. Out of character isn't isn't anything a s excuse for a feast in Hobbit lands. In Hobbit tradition, yes, pretty much everything is an excuse to have a big old party. But <laughs> it's a very like song. Yay! We've got famine. Come, let's celebrate with a huge feast. What? <laughs> It's pretty much a big somber funeral, just burying them with their prized belongings, and then a big party celebrating the life that was. But now yeah. it's being done en masse, so they have to take notes onto each life that wasn't lost. Okay. So you make your way, uh, funnily enough, uh, westwards to get to Eastbrook. Well, you know. Yeah, and you pick up on the on the the, uh, the trail that was uh, trodden down by the carts and all that that moved between the Shire and Eastbrook recently. This time we're following the Goblin Trail towards Eastbrook. <laughs> Oh well, no, this is more of a trail trail, as in stomped down by lots of feet and uh, carriages. Okay. Suddenly Tom gets dysentery. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> Who's this Terry he keeps dissing? Uh, he, he's kind of an asshole. That's all you need to know about him. <laughs> yeah, so on your way there, you did notice that the, the tracks actually, like, split into three, all heading to the various entrances of Eastbrook. So, taking the most direct one, you end up, uh, coming, coming out here with, uh, You come in from the, you come in from the east to Eastbrook, because, yeah, it was the most direct route. Uh, currently, the town seems to be fully recovered from the attack. A lot of the repairs have been done. You you can tell quite easily as to like where the new tiles and stonework and woodwork have been put into place. But there are some who are like painting the wood down with this thick, clear-ish sort of brown substance just to keep it watertight pretty much. There's basically finishing touches being done whereas the main repairs have, have already been finished. Everyone seems to be out and about. The uh, town seems to be alive again unlike well, unlike during the attack and no, it was pretty lively during the party. <laughs> Everything seems to just be uh, normal again. But what is normal, really? It depends. Such a thing as perspective, and this town, it's reached that. It's reached its. 
All right, so let's head over to the, uh, what is it, the town hall? Town hall, yes. Number two. Go report in. <coughs> mm -hmm. Raging Phoenix is just going to follow along, as she always does. Upon seeing you, various townsfolk wave and you know, pass a smile and wish you good morning. Well, actually, by this time, they're wishing you good afternoon, but still. Close enough. You may camp a few times on the way here and arrived just after midday. It's like, good morning. It's afternoon, Deirdre. Oh, well, good afternoon then. I mean, who really cares? Oh, I do. All right, you old busybody. <laughs> I was just trying to be friendly. Why do you gotta shoot me down like that? <laughs> okay, so heading into the town hall, Harry's just sitting there, going through what seems to be a few civil requests. And there is, uh, Upon hearing you enter, though, he looks up and sees you and sits it down. He's wearing more casual clothes today. He's got his armor just on a rack nearby and his weapon, but he's wearing, like, less wartime clothing. Ah. You have returned, and we have not been attacked. Well... Since you left, so I'm assuming things went well. Yeah, for the most part. Found the Goblin King. No more Goblin King. You... The Goblin Village seems to be rather peaceful without their king. That's most likely just confusion while they figure out what they're going to do next and elect a new leader. But it should hopefully be more peaceful in comparison. Hopefully they'll Indeed. go back to their more Con cloistered ways. Considering that they were just invaded by a small band of adventurers and their king, whom pledged himself to an evil goddess, was destroyed, they will uh, be unlikely willing to the same attack twice. Evil goddess, you say? Any one in particular? Tom hands over a piece of paper with the image of the crown that the one king had been wearing. Didn't you Rough chip little the, sketch. Didn't you chip... Oh, did you destroy that after doing the sketch then, I guess? Yeah, he skipped it after the king had been killed and they'd been hunting down shit to destroy. Oh, okay, I, d I didn't remember that. But I remember you taking pieces of the altar and taking the stone head of the goblin king with the crown still attached. Oh yeah, that, that's one thing we're going to do while we're in town, since they've got a forge here, is we're going to be melting that shit down. <laughs> well then, this, uh... He, he, he pauses, goes into his drawers, pulls out a book, <coughs> flicks through the pages, finds the symbol. Oh. Well, that makes sense for goblins, I suppose, but... I never thought them really that organized to follow a religion. They weren't. Well. Yeah. <clears throat> Likely the king was the only one actually in charge. The others seemed to be under his sway. Yes, and it seems the king was actually being given power through this. So... He may not have been the one in charge, really. I see. Well, that's rather troubling. Well, let us hope that none others fall to the same influence and we have a repeat of this situation. Though thank you, of course, there is uh, good to know that we should expect some form of peace for a while, at least from the goblins. We also heard 
uh, about your discovery of the Shire and uh, hmm. I always forget what names they give to those places but all we really know is that the closest one to us currently had one survivor that you found we fixed him up and managed to send a few messages to his other kin and I'm not sure if you saw on the way back but recovery has begun over there yep alright well we mostly came back to kind of check on things make sure you knew what was going on oh yes ever since you left and we haven't had any attacks from the goblins and everything's been settling back down to normal people were a little bit less on edge than they usually were uh, in fact it's gotten so normal that Persephone is over in the uh, the constable's office just keeping an eye on the drunks <laughs> he's even got his own cell back alright well uh... The rest of you. Uh. Oh, sorry. You sound awful tired. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, I guess that's uh, about it. Uh, we'll rest here the night, and then we need to get back on the road. All right. Well, is there anything in particular you need? I mean. Uh, the town doesn't have much in the way of fortune and to offer you a reward, but ah, we do have some skilled smithies like if you that. need something made. We do need access to a forge for a bit. Well, of course. That will suffice. Thank you. Well, if you just head down the main street, then he should be third on your left. Okay, Tom will head there with the uh, bad baggie. Bad baggie. <laughs> and following. Yeah, might as well. Yerp. I think Phoenix is just following, as always. Uh, third on your left, as in, like, your character walking down the street. Oh, on the left. ten. Yeah, ten. I'm trying to think if Enfys even has anything you'd want to do any shopping for or anything like that, but... R&M goes to find a, a tree to sit under and just read for a bit. Yeah, this one. This one seems good. Yeah! Reading! Oh. Yep. Yeah, I think so. That's the inn there, oh. and the tavern's across the road. That's the tavern. Let's see which one is the so, inn. That's the inn. Tom will make sure that the, the gold bits from the from the altar get dumped that's into the, the appropriate kettle and melted. Yes, heading in, you see uh, uh, a pair of uh, humans in there, one of which seems to be rather aged and he is a man with a rather proud grey beard and his and there is also a young woman in there with him who seems to be paying attention to what he is doing and learning the craft as it were she also has a proud grey beard actually no she has um, <laughs> she doesn't have a beard of course but she does have a lot she does have grey hair despite her young appearance <laughs> I had to Alright, just make sure it doesn't get too hot. I'm going to see to these customers. Alright, Pa. Welcome! Ah, you are the bunch that ran off those goblins, aren't you? We are. Well, welcome to my forge. 
anything made, then well, let's say actually, I, I can afford to do a few things off the books. <laughs> actually, we need some things destroyed. Oh. He plops the bad bag down and opens it up, empties it out on the table. All right. He takes cut of the chunks of gold and he bites it and sees his teeth marks because it's, you know, a soft metal. He goes, are you sure you don't want these made into coin? However you wish, but we wish their original form to be destroyed. All right. Well, I can't actually make them coins myself. I can melt them down to a few ingots and you can head them to the bank, but... I'll need to get permission for them to actually mint some coin, of course. But, yeah, I can melt this down. As for these other bits... Well, uh... Hey, Sally! I think it's about time I taught you what happens when you overheat metal. <laughs> and don't treat it right. Uh, well... It's gonna take me a bit to smelt this down into... something that'll be a bit more of value, rather than just taking loose chunks. And uh, the rest of it, just leave it with me. I'll have it destroyed soon enough. Uh, is that all you need? Or silence? Is it? Well, I'll haul out mine so he can deal with them too. Oh, yep. Okay. All right. All right. If you... there's nothing really that Tom needs made, so we just came here to destroy stuff. Alright, well if you ever need anything then in the student town, just come let me know. Thank you. Okay, taking the items from you, he looks to you from there and he goes, Well, give me a few hours and I'll have this done. Tom bows and his business concluded, heads back out. Seeing you come out, Rising Phoenix just like, pushes off her part where she's been leaning on the wall and just goes to keep pace, as she does. Ah, I see Enfys has taken a visit to the inn, the, um, the tavern. Yes, he has. Okay. Inside the tavern, there is music. There is, uh... Plenty of drinks and people being merry, even though it's only early afternoon. There also seem to be a quite a group of people playing various games. Hey, it's five o'clock somewhere. Clink. There are people playing various forms of dice. There even seem to be some board uh, games, and, and there's some people who are just throwing. Uh, well, at this point, it's throwing knife at a board. I don't think they've refined darts. Well, they are dart weapons, but yeah. <laughs> I guess somewhere, somewhere, uh, at some time, someone figured that darts were the most useful thing for this type of game. Uh, yeah, Enfys just goes into uh, for the moment, uh, get a drink. Maybe make a little bit of small talk about how the recovery is going. Ah, uh, you know, it's going well. I mean, we've got plenty of skilled craftsmen in this town and plenty of supplies. Thankfully, they didn't do too much damage, therefore, it was only patchwork that really needed doing. Good, good. Ah. Uh... <clears throat> so, any 
particular materials you'd need, we are going to be heading to uh, another nearby town, likely. Uh, Don't know if... Uh, might need uh, might need something. Sorry, that literally just occurred to me. <laughs> oh, no, it's it's fine. We, we, have, we didn't find our shell cells uh, short on any materials. We've, uh, well, until we had to stop the caravans for a while until the goblin problem was fixed, we've been keeping a good stock of trade between ourselves and the capital. Alright, well, I'll let the other town know that the, uh, issue with the Goblin King should be resolved and that uh, trade hopefully can safely resume. Oh yeah. Heading all the way back to Fairwall, are you? Uh, well, no, we're actually going to be heading to... what's the name of that town again? I'm terrible. Wintervale. Wintervale. Oh, alright there. I have had I heard they were having some form of witch hunt out there. Uh, no idea how it's been going. We've not heard from them in some time. Yeah, that's right. Apparently that's where some of our finest of uh, finest warriors have gone. At least according to Harry. Alright, well. We'll find out what's going on. Mm. Probably. <coughs> I'm sure you will. You adventuring types always seem to get up into so much and that's where most of us uh, tavern keepers end up getting our stories from <laughs> all these people talking about adventures yeah although I'll admit this is still a bit new to me well you seem to be doing fine <laughs> thank you uh, you're welcome all right. that's it he's just gonna there's uh few coppers worth. Mm -hmm. Tom will just go and get a room at the end. Actually, I think it's... Uh... How much was it for... On the bar, there's a few, like, nuts, roast potatoes, and little, little bread rolls. So I actually went to a bar where, at least on a Sunday, the bar snacks did involve stuff like, uh, like sausage rolls, baked potatoes, not baked potatoes, uh, roast potatoes, and like other bits like that. It's amazing. I mean, it's pretty much all to get you to drink more because they were all various kind of dry foods. But yeah, it was great. So, Tom heads to the inn. His room is, of course, uh, gratis. And uh, when you go to throw down a few copper, the barmaid just sweeps them back to you and goes, uh, I think we're still slightly in debt to you. <laughs> well, who am I to refuse your kindness? Thank you. Well, I don't know. I have no idea what your name is. <laughs> oh! <laughs> It's Enthus, and you are? Ah, I'm Sarah. And, uh, nice to meet you, Enthus. Pleasure to meet you. And then she gets distracted by another customer who comes up to the bar with an empty tankard. She's just your, your typical middle-aged tavern owner. She's got crow's feet, but she's spirited. Okay, so who else is doing what? Aaron, I'm still reading. I'm having a great time. <laughs> I'm trying to see if there's anything I want to buy, but that's just kind of out of character, me scrolling through. Oh yeah. Jen's just kind of sitting there in the end, just kind of reading a little bit. Just kind of relaxing, you know, that kind of thing. 
I have just discovered that, that that there exists a thing called an aquarium ball. Yeah, it's, it's just a fish bowl. Yeah, it's a fish bowl you can hang around your neck and carry with you. Just for that, like, one fish. <laughs> yeah, I know. But it would, it would give Aaron um, like a, a pet. I think that would be funny. Oh, yeah, because he can't uh, No, let's, let's not encourage him. <laughs> Rising Phoenix enters the inn and sees Genevieve reading. And she goes to sit down with her. Hey, Rising, what's up? I uh, saw you reading and thought maybe you could help me to read, if not too much trouble. Oh, not at all. It turns out like, like she's reading something like really complicated, so can't really use it to teach people. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna confess. Um, Rising Phoenix kind of reminds me a little bit of Ayla from Chrono Trigger, with how she reacts sometimes. <laughs> just saying. Fair enough. I haven't played it, it just amuses me. Unfortunately, <laughs> it's one I've always got wanted to get round to, but never actually got to. And whenever you stream it, I tend to always be asleep. It's not my fault. No, it's, it not. it's just time zones, don't worry about it. Putting it on YouTube though. Oh true. Yeah. I'll go do that. Alright, so I guess we'll start with the basics. Do you know the alphabet? I not sure what that word means. I think so. Uh I know how each letter sounds, A, B, C, but I find it difficult to read them or write them. In fact, my people all seem to have this problem. Therefore, we're very much a all people, I think they call it. I, I guess I would do like a, a profession check since I have the librarian profession. <laughs> To see if I can help her figure this out. Hmm. I don't have any points in it though. Well, as long as you got some rankings in it. Well, I mean, I mean, a total skill, then you can use it. No, I think I was told not to do that, so I didn't do it. What's your name then? Right, you need. Oh yeah, because oh. you need a one rank in the first to use it. Um, I guess roll a flat beat for you then. I don't like fried zucchini. Hmm? I don't particularly like fried zucchini. Oh, I love it. Um, so anyway, Genevieve is going to try to explain this to, uh, to Phoenix. Raising Phoenix is going to try to do a will save against dyslexia. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I'm gonna take that as a no. She she's trying, she really is, but then she like eventually you get her to like read a couple of words. But then like we soon after when she's like you know, you start talking for a bit and then she looks back at it and she's like I uh yeah. <laughs> It's okay, we'll just take our time with it. Okay. I uh I, I think I try enough for today. I head feel heavy. Ah, uh, okay, well, d do you want something to drink? No, uh, yeah, I, I think I go to tavern. She just gets up and heads out, head goes across the street. I, I also, she, she goes out of the door and then sort of kind of stops, leans back in and goes, oh, and uh, thank you. <laughs> It's no problem. Just have to take it easy. She heads into the tavern, waves at Emphis. Emphis gives the nod wave back. He's still 
probably nursing the first drink. He doesn't drink very fast, or much. <laughs> She walks in, just asks for a horn of mead. She gets a tankard of mead, and you know that's fine. <laughs> Sorry, we're all out of horns. <laughs> uh, I'm running short on mine. Yeah, because you may have noticed this. So she basically got like these horns with like a bit of high, just kind of bound over the top of it to keep it sealed and whenever she thinks it at an appropriate occasion she basically pulls it out rips the skin off and there's just meat in the horn <laughs> she's been steadily going through those so that's her <coughs> cheese that's her cheese everybody got a cheese I suddenly feel the craving for cheese. I mean, what? Behold, power of cheese. <laughs> okay. So, not much really goes on during the day. It's, as I said, it's back to normal in the town and nothing seems to spring up. Yeah, just get a meal and one more drink at the, uh, the tavern and then head back over to the inn. Mm -hmm. you leave you see Rising Phoenix looks over and sees them playing uh, darts essentially and she smiles and gets them and goes I've always been good at that game I'm gonna go play That's pretty good. and then she proceeds to put the dart through the dartboard <laughs> I'd get a high score now <laughs> she just picks up a drink and heads over and uh, I don't know, I'm just gonna do like a ranged attack to see how good her darts are. Very good. Her darts are pretty fucking good. <laughs> okay. So you've headed over to the inn. I guess it's like getting to off later afternoon. And, uh, everyone's just having a lazy day, which I guess being an adventurer you don't really get often. <laughs> yeah, no shit. We're all relaxing. Screw everything. I'm just hiding in my room and I'm going to read. <laughs> Actually, I think Tom's doing the same thing. He's just reading. Okay. Maybe catching up on local literature or something. After a bit, you see a, a young silver-haired woman poke, 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 poke her head into the uh, inn. She spots uh, Genevieve, and she smiles and heads over to her and goes, Oh, hey, um, this is uh, the gold that was melted down for you. I uh, was thought said to bring it over here because, well, we knew you'd be staying at the inn. Oh, yeah, I believe Tom mentioned something about doing this. Mm -hmm. Well, there you are. I mean, one of the bars isn't perfect, but, you know, I I tried. <laughs> hey, it works. Um, do I owe you anything, or...? Uh, pardon say I did, you did, so no. I'm uh, sure you'll send me right back if, I, if you do, but I doubt it. Alright, well... There's just like a 
bunk as she just sets the bag down the table and heads out. Just kind of sitting there staring at the bag. That that was a really loud. That was a loud thunk. <laughs> Genevieve just kind of pokes it a bit. Satisfied, picks it up and goes to take it to Tom's room, I suppose. Yeah. When you go to pick it up, you do notice the the weight of it, seems the gold chunks were pretty much carried by two people and are now condensed. To which then I look back at the door and be like, wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, she carried it like it was nothing. She had it slung uh, over her shoulder, but you also notice that she's a blacksmith's daughter, therefore she was fairly ripped. <laughs> yeah. First. And, you know, burns all over her arms. Pretty much, she had like a few black spots on her hands. And various burns and all that. I guess I'll go drop this off at Tom's room then. Mm -hmm. Knock on the door. Yo, Tom, you in there? Yes. Yeah, the, the blacksmith lady just uh, dropped this off. Come in. Alright. Open the door, I'm gonna hoist the bag in there. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, gra Tom lets the bag thunk onto the ground and then picks it up. Looks inside. Hmm. We should definitely remember to forget a few of these before we leave town. Well, there's a total of three ingots in there. Uh, oh, you didn't have them do the the small ingots. You had them do the big fucking bars, didn't you? Well, also because, you know, the each, how much gold goes into one ingot is quite, pretty significant. And also, as you said, the, they said that basically you need to go to the bank to get it authorized to be made into coin, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Hmm. What did you want to do with these? We should take these to the bank so that they can be made into coin, and then we can forget a few on our way out. Sounds like a plan. Where is the bank in this town, anyway? Um, or is good question. There one here? <laughs> good question. Where is the bank in this town? Uh, let's see. I'm going to go down to the legend. Do we have a bank? Uh, Taylor, General Store, Tanner, Fletcher, Ball, Fletcher. I don't know. Maybe it would just be like Town Hall. Would yeah, that'd probably money. double as a bank, given the time period. Yeah. Okay, so typical weight of a gold bar is about 27 pounds. Okay, and how much is that worth in Pathfinder Town? Okay, that's nice. Figuring out three bars typical weight and then the value given to me in terms of Pathfinder gives us 4,100 gold. 
that's quite a bit. Yeah, I, I think a hundred of that is going to be quote unquote forgotten. Mm -hmm. Easily. Ooh, ooh, can I skip some across the pond? <laughs> God, we have no use for our money. I think you cut off. <laughs> that didn't sound like an end of a sentence. <laughs> no, it didn't. But yeah, be careful because the Lady of the Lake will throw it right back at you. Just checking it out. Oh, what does some watery tart know? Back of the head. Doink! <laughs> So yeah, we'll head to the, uh, yeah, there. Okay. Get the bars, exchange your coins. Yeah, and you've got, let's see. Yeah, so you're carrying about like 71 pounds in that sack. Yeah, Tom's not going with his gear on. <laughs> He's just carrying the sack. Which is actually well within his load limit. All right, so I, I, are you doing this the same load, day, aren't so. you? Huh? Are you doing yeah, this the same, same day in the evening? Okay. Yeah. He's actually under medium load with just the sack. Well, as it's the evening time, you see that Harry's pretty much uh, just filing things away for the day. Him in the door go, he looks around and sees you and he goes, Ah, oh, Tom, what can I do you for this out? He goes, What? Sorry, cut out for a minute for me. He says, uh, Tom, what can I do for you for at this hour? Just a bit of gold to transfer into coin. Ah, oh, right. Kathunk. <laughs> I assume that's what you needed the forge for. Yes. Holy symbols to the evil goddess that had to be destroyed. Hmm. Smart I figured they would, they would be more use as this than, uh, than in their current, than in their previous form. Certainly. Right, I'll, uh, if you just give me one moment, and he takes the sack and opens up a trap door and heads to the, the treasury downstairs. You hear a few like clink and clanks as he like weighs it up and the sounds of like a heavy door being opened as he deposits the ingots and counts out the appropriate amount of coin. In fact he puts it in the same sack and comes back with a mighty fine load of gold coin. <laughs> Ah, there you are. That's, uh, came out at around 4,100 gold pieces worth. You melted down there. Thank you very much. Ah, you're welcome. It's not like it's, uh, either of us losing anything. It's just changing forms. Indeed. <coughs> Indeed. <clears throat> and then he just closes his trap door and locks it and sticks the key on his belt. Oh. Have a good night. Oh, I shall. If you if you don't mind, he starts to go around putting out the lanterns. Yeah, oil and lanterns Tom's and stuff. out and going back to the inn. And he's gonna kind of meet with everyone. Yeah, as Once you head out, there. like. He follows you out, locks the door up. Persephone's just leading old Cletus out of his cell and just letting him go for the night. And she's like, all right, just try to keep it in moderation. I know you won't, but at least try. And she's got just, <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> he walks up. <laughs> oh my god, it's like that guy from Andy Griffith. <laughs> Except th thankfully we don't have a Barney Fife here. 
Rising yeah. Phoenix heads out of the tavern. She seems to have uh, just a few trinkets with her. <laughs> Tom's going to kind of call a little meeting once everyone's there. Uh, what's Tuffy be doing all day? Are you going to be... Wandering around, talking to people, playing with animals. Ah, oh, okay, okay. Well, when the meeting is called, Rising Phoenix just heads and sits down. She's got this weird thing that she keeps playing with. And she like, seems to be like some form of... It looks like a telescope, but she just keeps looking through it and just kind of laughing to herself. She's got one of those. Okay, Tom is carefully subdividing some of the gold into seven equal sacks. Okay. And what? Oh, I was just gonna say, um and for seeing that would just say to uh uh Put my gold in with whatever communal money we have on the, uh, with the wagon. I already have more money than I know what to do with. This is not for us. Okay. Then what are you doing? We will wait for Tuffy, then I will tell everyone. Oh, I'm there. Sorry. <laughs> Tuffy's ears are burning. Tuffy senses tingling. We will each take one of these sacks of gold, and we will hide them amongst the si amongst the town at night. This is our thank you for letting them stay, for letting us stay so kindly. And besides, the town could use some good some good luck. Oh. <coughs> each of these sacks contains one hundred gold pieces. Hmm. Alright, so no skipping coins across the pond then. <coughs> if you wish. You may uh, that seems kind of a really dick thing to do. <laughs> Especially if we're gonna, you know, basically give it to these people. 700 gold should do the town very well. Hmm. Okay. Is everyone okay with this? I, I mean, I'm not saying I am okay with it. I'm, I'm fine with it. Yep, same here. I'm not complaining. Like Tom I said, starts, I don't know. I don't have anything to do with the money anyway. <laughs> Tom starts handing out sacks of gold. Hide them wherever you wish, but make sure that they can be found. Hmm. Why does he just puts away a little telescope and takes the gold and heads out? Tom will put the remaining gold on their cart in the communal pile. That's quickly becoming a dragon's hoard. <laughs> and then right. head out to hide his sack of gold. And just looks around for a large tree. There's several of them. One near What's six. the largest tree? One near four. The one near six, uh -huh. it looks like. It's the largest that's inside the town. Eh, you can have it on one of the main roads on the way in. Oh, that the one, one next like the largest tree. to the right of Main Street. 
Yeah. No, that one's right. pretty large too. Yeah. Enfys is going to make a stealth check. <laughs> He's taking this way too seriously. A bit, but it works. All right, let's see how bad his stealth roll is. <laughs> okay, he aces it. Uh, he he stealths over to the uh, to the tree. Uh. Area. <laughs> Even when Tom's not being careful, he at least makes it. Yeah, Jen's just going to stick to the ground and just going to start moving like through the residential area, just kind of casually spreading coin through gardens. <laughs> That's neat. Alright, now he's going to make oh. a uh, climb check. Where the tree? Wait, I have to ask, are you putting the entire bag in the tree? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be this right gust of wind, and that thing is going to come down and smack somebody in the head. I'm calling it <laughs> Hey, then they'll have enough coins for their funeral. Oh, that's dark. Sorry. <laughs> Don't be sorry. It was funny. Yeah, I think uh, Sage is going to be wandering around the outskirts of the town. Um, looking for the poorer houses, actually. Enfys is doing this, so it probably goes to someone who appreciates nature. Yeah. Actually looks at the trees. <laughs> other than probably, like, a stable, is there any other place in town that has somebody that deals with animals? Or would the stable be the best place? Uh, the stable would be the best place. I mean, All right. yeah, in terms of living animals. <laughs> Well, yeah. So she's gonna, like, sneak on over to the stables. Mm hmm. Rising Phoenix went and found the most damaged building that seems to have the most repairs done to it. Climbed up on the roof, snuck across the roof, looked down the chimney, made sure there was no fire going, then just dropped the sack in. <laughs> <laughs> she just hops off and runs away. <laughs> Merry Christmas! I don't even know what that is! <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Tubby's gonna head over to the stables and everything and find a place to hide it and then she's gonna tell like the, the horses around like make sure they find it. You stick it in one of their bales of hay and you tell one of the horses yeah. and the horse looks at you and goes, I'll just remember not to chew there. <laughs> yeah. She's like, don't eat it, but make sure that they get it. Alright, I just put it somewhere that you can... If you're looking directly at the tree, you should be able to see it either tied somewhere or... You find a nice little Tom hollow in the tree. Enough. Yeah. Tom put his leaning up against uh, building number seven, which is the tailor's shop. Leaning up against the back side of the tailor shop. And Fist uh, then proceeds to jump out of the tree and head back. But <laughs> Nope, that's actually impossible. <laughs> and Fist cannot go thud. He did on his first fall from a good height. Yes, but he can't anymore. <laughs> Like, not even if he wants to, I think. In terms of poor houses, there really aren't any in this town, because it's, like, quite a small community. There are some that are just... They look like they've just been around longer, but they don't seem to be any, any worse off or worse for it. I give Sage Heart a high five as I walk by. Yeah. <laughs> like... any, places, any places that have laundry hanging out to dry. Oh, well, neat. Okay. Yeah, there, there is, if, uh, it, over here, there is some laundry. There's, there's a laundry line, like, between these two close houses. Yep. Okay. It's kind of like when they have it, like, you know, uh, let's see, how do it, but they sort of just do it like that, like that, like that, like yeah. between the houses. 
Yeah. Like a crisscross between them. Well, basically keeping my eyes open for places like that, and I'm just gonna slide them um, into the stockings. Yeah, I know. Christmas all over again. But, hey. Yes, stockings and all that sort of thing, and chimneys. But, you know. Probably toss a handful in the town fountain for those who try to make wishes or whatever. Who knows? <sighs> in the reasonably clear waters of the fountain, the gold twinkles noticeably, even in the moonlight as it, the sun has disappeared. Well, just lightly scattered in there, so, yeah. And then head on in. Did you make a wish? <laughs> Me? Uh -oh. Yeah, I wish somebody um, needed get finds these. Somebody who needs them finds them. Then you find out that one of those stockings saved a woman's life as a hungry wolf came after her, but the heavy coins in the stocking gave her a good weapon to fend it off with. <laughs> <laughs> That works too. <laughs> so everyone comes back for their little uh, gift giving escapade. Escapade. Okay, so what's the updated party bank now you've done that? Okay, updated party bank is 122 platinum, mm -hmm. 4,728 gold, mm -hmm. 1,187 silver. Okay. I've got 376 copper here for some reason. I don't... Do, do we still have that, or is that just being I never listed any copper, so okay. if you want me to list that, I'll do it. Yeah, 376 copper. I suppose it's probably just being slowly chipped away with each tavern visit, <laughs> at least yeah. at places that you have to you actually have to pay. Yeah, Tom's personal wealth: twelve gold, three copper. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the way he likes it. I think that's how the way everyone likes it. Yeah, Rising Phoenix is only holding on to twenty-two gold, five silver, and seven copper. Yeah. And this has a bit of money actually still on him. Yeah. When the idea of the group I mean, bank came up, Rising Phoenix was just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he ever damn. put any of his money into the uh, group bank. No, he didn't. We actually have enough to start our own castle if we wanted to. Or get eh. those who don't enchanted weapons and armor. Or wooden armor, maybe, if Amphis would need it. <coughs> uh, we'd have enough left over after building a castle to get everyone enchanted weapons and armor. 122 platinum would pay for the castle alone. Dang. <sighs> Not that any of us actually want a castle. Well, we may want to have a permanent hidey hole at some point. True. Maybe. Like maybe just get our own little hideout out somewhere. Yeah, start our own fallen guild. That'd be weird. Be interesting. Just have enough money and knowledge that we could actually build a proper floating sky fortress that doesn't rely on a dragon. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> this boy oh, has success over here. <laughs> okay, maybe we can't afford a castle. Uh, oh. uh, Looked up how much a castle actually costs. 108,000 gold. Alright. I want a scholar's ring. Let's... 10,800 platinum. This is going off the 3.5 Kingmaker series, though. But 3.5 is close enough to Pathfinder. 
Oh, someone here says for an entire castle, including the small keep, the watchtowers, and all that, would be two hundred thousand gold pieces. Two hundred thousand. Damn. So twenty thousand platinum. Yeah, because apparently a castle costs fifty build points, and a build point is four thousand gold. Mm. Yep, anyway. I totally want a scholar's ring. Scholar's ring? I have decided. Grants complete understanding of any written text or spoken language, even one that you have never encountered before, uh, as with the comprehend language's spell. Also adds a plus five competent bonus on knowledge history checks. Mm. Sounds cool. <coughs> Scholar's ring, pathfinder, here we go. <laughs> oh my god, we could we can actually afford an alchemical dragon. <laughs> You'd have to find somewhere advanced enough that builds them though. <laughs> yeah. We we're could just fly suddenly, back we're... with a dragon on our own dragon. We could get our own Ragnarok to explore the land with. <laughs> we're just suddenly like Bender, you know, we're like, forget this theme park, I'll build my own theme park with gambling and hookers. <laughs> Blackjack. <laughs> Which, we'll, just, we'll just be like, forget this dragon, we'll build our own dragon. It'll be better than your dragon. <laughs> we'll have Blackjack and hookers. Well, you, were... you know what, for blackjack. Well, you were looking for a way to get back to the dragon eventually. Yeah. That's why I find it absolutely hilarious that we can make a wooden, a wooden dragon and fly it back. Oh my god. I least you now have a, like a, a goal for this uh, money. <laughs> An airship costs fifty grand. It's a colossal air vehicle. Mm -hmm. Twenty foot by sixty foot. Fifty grand. Oh. I, I, I want I want a riding dire bat so then I could be a a, a mounted air archer. <laughs> you just That'd want someone awesome. to talk to while you're in the air. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Did you guys hear that on my end? Nope. That was thunder. Oh dear. So I was asking, he was like, "Did you guys hear that?" Loud. Nope. There's also the feathered galley, which is a galley which has sails made of feathers. And the figurehead depicts a beautiful harpy flying above the jaws of a snapping sea drake. And it flies. That might be a bit more fitting to the time period. Well then again, our chemical dragon is also just needing to find someone who makes the damn thing. Ooh, an equestrian belt. It would basically give me, like, automatic successes on my ride checks, pretty much. 100,000 gold pieces for an alchemical dragon. So we can't afford that yet, but we, we yeah. can get there. No, but you've got an alchemist who can learn eventually in one of these decades to make it. Oh... Problem? No, I'm just looking at the the uh, what happens if you crash. <laughs> DC thirty dri DC thirty driving check to avoid it exploding, and if you fail, t ten d ten points of fire damage to everything in sixty foot radius. Ooh. 
Thank you God know, by we that point, a... Enfys will be able to fly. A DC we could take a bunch of a parachutes, fly above the dragon, and then just make our own make our own way into it. Nah, you're just Enfys is just gonna have to cast like Ant Hall and Bull Strength on himself and ferry people over. <laughs> The feathered galley sounds kind of awesome. Though. A fucking galley with just magical sails that allow you to fly. It's like Peter Pan. <laughs> anyway. So we've done our amazingly charitable deed. We've got the east work. We've had a lazy day. And we've, uh, I suppose at this point, had dinner and maybe a bit of evening entertainment and then off to bed. Yep. Cool. <clears throat> wow, that actually almost taxed my connection there. What did? What? I had uh, apparently Steam decided it was going to download something, but I had a vast trying to update at the same time, and there was a couple of other things that were trying to update as well, yeah. all at the same time. I keep I keep telling you to not leave Steam on twenty four seven. It's fine. I mean, it, it, that's this is the only time it's ever really been a problem. Yeah. Okay, so I said I was going to keep this a short session. Um, we could just make our way to the next place if you wanted to, but this would be a good place to stop if people feel like they want to. Yeah. I'm okay with whatever. I, I'd probably be yeah. on the, the stopping side. Okay. Alright, so it's been a, a nice hour and 22 minutes. We've had a bit of fun, a few laughs, just kept it simple. Hopefully it's not this ridiculously humid next week. And I wish that night time would actually cool down. <laughs> well, it has cooled down, but it's still pretty warm in respects. So thank you for this... watching, whether live or recorded. This has been On Ever Though Game Mastering Pathfinder Dragonfall. And we'll see you next week. Same dragon stream, same dragon time. Yes.